Hi, how are you doing? Chris here with something a little different here today and I'm going to just show you how to get the maximum you can get, really squeeze the best performance possible out of your Atom X5. Now this particular model I'm using here is a Chewy HI12. It's one of my favorite Chinese tablets because of its great screen, great battery life and full size USB ports. So there's a few things you can do just to help the performance a little. Now, some of these are very obvious, but I'm going to go through them anyway because some people don't know. Now towards the end of this video, I'm going to have a look at BIOS settings just to get the RAM speeds a little faster. Now this is for experienced advanced users, and I do not recommend changing any of those settings if you don't have any experience because you can brick your tablet. So first up, what I normally do to try and get maximum performance is you can go into System just right click the start menu and then into advanced system settings. Now in here, this is this is an obvious thing to tweak, but in here we have performance settings that we can change. So if you set this adjust for best performance, that's gonna make Windows feel a little more snappy, a little quicker to load. And it does help with the atoms, I find. Now the other setting to change is on your desktop, right click and go into graphics properties. And if you go into power, if you're gaming, this one has a huge impact on gaming performance. So extended battery life for gaming, what it does is lower the GPU clock rates and in turn performance suffers. So disabling this, that is going to give you a little boost there. And make sure you hit apply. Now the display power saving technology, this might or might not be there depending on the driver setting. So on the Chewy HI12 it's here, you can enable that and that's going to just give you some battery saving. But I have that disabled because I find sometimes it makes the display flicker a little, it lowers the brightness and not really necessary on this tablet. So now things should open up a little bit quicker with that little tweak. The other thing here is you can go into is the C drive. So right click that, properties, and go over to tools. Now what I've done here, it's already actually, I've applied this already, allow files on this drive to have context indexed. You can untick that, it takes a while, hit OK. That will take on these atoms sometimes up to about 10 minutes and what it does is improve the writes. Apparently it helps improve write speeds because it's not writing or not indexing all those files there. Now if you need things to be found very quickly by searching then probably leave that enabled but it's a little tweak that, that can help other things are obvious too like disk clean up run that clean up any files try to keep the drive as free as possible if it's used up almost 100 percent that could affect the performance of the drive another obvious setting is to optimize and defrag the drive now it's not a hard drive, a physical one, so you won't be defragging it, but what we would be doing is trimming it. So all you need to do is just click the Optimize for C drive, Recovery you can't, and there it will start to trim the drive, which should help the right performance. Okay, so two of these settings I would actually leave on. Sorry, I wouldn't disable all of them, and that is the smooth edges of screen fonts and the use drop shadows, just to make the text a little nicer. So those two apply, and then the desktop text there you can see now for the icons is readable before it's not really that readable. So now with that done, another tweak is very debatable this one here and that is the power option. So right clicking, or you can go through the settings, right clicking the battery icon and then going to power options. By default, you only have balance enabled. Now what I've done here is I disabled the connected standby which isn't the best idea. You can go back and re-enable it. Um, but I'm not going to go into too many details of this one because I've been doing some testing and I honestly don't think it is really worth it. You can run all the cores clocked in higher performance here and that will improve maybe disk eMMC read and writes a tiny little bit. I honestly don't think it's worth it for the trade-off in the battery life, which is why I'm not going to go into too many details, but details here. But with balance, you can at least go into the change plan settings advanced power settings here and there is an option here to go through and tweak what's called the deny dynamic platform and thermal framework setting. So from here the power limit and the acoustics limit this will probably all be set on level 3. Increasing this to level 5 can 
help a little bit, giving you a little bit more power there. Now why I say the power setting there is debatable because what is happening really is when you're not running this on balanced, on balance the four cores will allow the single core to clock up a lot higher but if you keep it on the performance mode, so if you select high performance then you're running all four cores at a lower clock rate so it's really dependent on really if you're going to run applications that are going to support the multi cores there so whether they're going to support single thread or multi threaded so really that's why I think it's debatable that one there to adjust that now if you want to go in and find out how to do that there's actually a small little application that you can enable disable the connected standby and that will free up full control here of the custom power plants you can go along and change it to high performance so now the other thing here I'm going to show you is quite an advanced thing to look at and that is the RAM settings now some of these tablets they support normally this is an Atom X5 Z8300 that supports 1600 megahertz RAM speed some of these tablets have that clocked only to 10 to 1066 and the RAM timings on normal we can go on there and add a few little tweaks that can help boost performance a little bit of things like Chrome which were quite memory intensive and the Atom is still it's not a very powerful chipset but it is quite good on batteries and it can only do so much so this is only going to help just about 10% of noticed in benchmarks where it might help it is maybe even a little bit in gaming too so for that we're going to need to actually just power down restart the tablet and make sure you have a keyboard connected up to it. So either a USB keyboard or the keyboard dock if your model supports it and then hit escape or delete I tune to hit both of them at the same time and we'll go into the BIOS settings and I'll show you what can be tweaked there. Uh, just a word of warning though these tweaks can affect the tablet to the fact that it won't boot anymore you could brick it so this part here is a little risky. Alright so with a USB keyboard here connected now I'm going to power it down and restart is all you need to do. So restart there and once it starts to fire up again just keep mashing the escape or delete button to gain access to the BIOS. Which is what I'm doing now. So here we are in the BIOS. Now as I already mentioned this is a little dangerous okay so changing settings in here that you don't know what you are messing with can be lethal for the tablet. So we're going on here into chipset Northbridge and then down to the memory configuration options. Now on a couple of tablets the frequency A is the first slot so this only has a it's only single channel so it's just got the one there that's the one setting we need to change so that's on 1600 which is fine now a lot of tablets a few of them like the Cube iWork 10 Ultimate I think was one some of the batches came out with that setting set to 1067 and now that RAM does support up to 1600 megahertz so that's where you can change that now do not mess with any other settings in here you try to set it to 1866 and your tablet will not boot again and you have a nightmare of a time to fix that you need to reflash the BIOS there is no safety on this and the other thing we can go along and change is the DDR the dynamic voltage and frequency scaling this well, you, you don't have to do this, but this is optional. You can enable this or keep it disabled. Some say it improves to uh, stability. Sorry. And the other one down here is the DRAM speed grade. Now, some tablets do not have this option. This is normally set to typical. Typical will be the default setting. You can adjust that to fast, which will tweak the RAM timings a little, just to help. And this is only going to give you a tiny little boost, but everything helps when you're talking about atoms which aren't exactly powerful chipsets there so there's nothing else really to change on here there's nothing we can tweak and we shouldn't be fiddling with anything else in here and the other thing we can do is go along to the graphics control sorry if we can adjust if you want to add more RAM to the graphics so that is under is under the top select uh, menu here so that's the Intel IGD configuration now this again is another setting that if you tweak this too much if you change anything here you can 
brick the tablet, so be careful. So pre-allocated is the only thing I would touch. I wouldn't touch anything else. So pre-allocated, normally that is set to 32. Now to make Chrome a little smoother, I would set that to maybe 256 megabytes of pre-allocated RAM. It seems to help a little bit. Now some people would say, no, you can't really notice a difference. I do, but it's down to personal preference there. So I will keep that on 256. Before I had it on 512, just checking that out, I couldn't really notice any difference. So allocating more doesn't really seem to have any in impact from the default 32. So 32 to 256, slight boost, but if you go any higher than 256, I haven't noticed any difference at all. So that is all done. And if we go along here now, finally, to save changes and exit. Now, because we're changing the RAM times in timings here, the reboot will take a little longer. So don't freak out thinking you have bricked it, because normally that shouldn't happen unless you changed other settings that you shouldn't have. So we'll do this now, and it should boot up. And you might notice a little bit of a difference here that it feels now, especially if you've changed from 1066 to 1600, I have seen about a 10% improvement in benchmarks at least. So I'll go back into Windows, and that is working just fine. So no problems here. So good luck with your tweaking there. There's only so much we can really do with these add-ons because they are very low-powered chipsets. And if you do want a device that's got a bit more power, I highly recommend getting a Core M or the Core M3, the latest one, the Skylakes, because they are at least in even more than they have more than twice the power of these atoms, especially the X5Z8300. Thanks for watching this, and hopefully we'll see you back in the channel with more up-and-coming videos like this one here and more unboxings of various tech from China.